<laughs> hey, we are live on the air. That's what it says. That's what Google tells us. So, hey, I'm Kim. Hi, Charles. That's Charles. We're from A Camera to Dream, and we're here with Miss Molly Marie. Talking Hello. Hey, hey, Molly. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Hey. What up in Eau Claire? Oh, just, um, just a little bit chilly. <laughs> All right. Just a little. Just got back from... Um, Eating some Asian cuisine. It was pretty tasty. Oh, nice. excellent. All right. <laughs> what do you well, guys want? Oh, you know, hanging out with you. See my dogs in the <laughs> background? Yay. <laughs> so we want to talk to you a little bit about boudoir. So um, obviously it's something that neither of us know a whole lot about, which is why we wanted to talk to you. Because I have done exactly two boudoir sessions in my life. Did you? Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not very well, might I add. And Charo, I think Charo did one. I think yours was really good, but that was quite a few years ago, wasn't it? No, I really didn't. It was um, it was JLo Bride. Yeah. It was the day of her wedding, and it was just the the oh, right. you know as she was getting ready, she wanted some sexy pictures. So it wasn't really a boudoir session. Okay. It was pretty. They were pretty pictures, but um, no, not a boudoir. And and that's the only one that I ever did. Right. So, yeah, no, we're complete, don't know the first thing about them. Yeah, well, and we were surprised a couple weeks ago we kind of took a poll of our readers since, you know, since Char and I mostly do weddings. We took a poll and we were really surprised at how many of our um, readers, I guess, or viewers or fans, let's just call them fans, hmm. um, <laughs> uh, do portraits in boudoir. And so we were like, oh, wow, okay. Um, so what we wanted to talk to you about is just give us kind of an overview of like how the heck you got into this and how you make your living shooting the booty. Yeah, so um, I think that it's really surprising to a lot of people, but it's really, boudoir is actually really, really profitable. Um, but yeah, I'm going to tell you guys how I got started in boudoir because it's, not really a traditional story. I don't think so. <laughs> but um, I actually started off my photo career by shooting weddings, I think like most photographers. Um, and one of my brides, she, I don't know, we became pretty good friends from shooting her wedding. She's a really like funny, quirky girl. And she was like, so, um, do you want to take boudoir pictures of me like in my lingerie in this hotel room? And I'm like, what the hell is boudoir, and why do you want me to take naked pictures of you? <laughs> like, you know, I'm totally open-minded, but I just had never heard of it before, so I was like, okay, you know, that's interesting. Um, and so naturally, I signed up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I met her at this hotel, actually, and um, I did the shoot, and I swear that I was more nervous than she was. Right. Um, like, she wasn't even nervous at all. And... Um, but like 10 minutes in, you know, I really, really enjoyed it. And at the end of the session, like, she, I mean, as much as she wanted to do it, I, I mean, she was a little nervous. And so it was cool to see, like, from the beginning of the session to the end of the session how much her confidence grew. Mm -hmm. And being able to do a shoot that was really rewarding in that sense is what really turned me on to boudoir. Um, and, like, with weddings, I just never felt that same... I don't know, that same sense of accomplishment in my, like, personal opinion. Um, right, so right. for me, like, I just really enjoyed boudoir. And so I had, I, you know, I sat down and I thought, you know, if I really enjoy this, how can I make this work in my business? Like, how can I just do this all the time? Because, as you know, you know, you want to have a job that you like going to work, especially when you own your own business, because it is a lot of work. Yes. So how long ago was that that you shot that first boudoir? 2010. Wow. Yeah. Holy cow. How far you've come. I mean, you're pretty well known, at least in our area, for doing Badois. So in three years, you're like, you're like shooting, shooting the ladies all the time. So that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty I cool. I actually started my business in 2007. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, it did help because I already knew how to run my business, things like that. But I didn't know how to market. Like, I knew how to market for other things, but I didn't know how to market for, for Badois. And it, it really is a little bit different. Like, you have to, you know, you can't just go up to someone and be like, hi, I want to partner with your business, I shoot boudoir, because, you know, people don't want to just hang boudoir pictures up in their business. Like, it's not that easy. So you have to get really creative with how you can market it. So how did you? I mean, you had that one bride. 
And where did so you you had no market base for basically other than maybe your former your former bride brides. Yeah. Where did you even start? Well, um, so how I did it, which there are a lot of different ways you can do it. Like even if you literally have no clients at all, you can definitely still become a boudoir photographer, booking you know consistent bookings. But for me, just like you said, I did have that bridal base and my portrait base. Um, so I did start off with that. I started off like for me, um, building my email newsletter was always really important because, you know, <laughs> I'm getting kind of off track here. But when I started my business in 2007, I think Facebook was. Do you guys know how old Facebook was? Oh, like a, a year? couple years old. It was like a year old, I think. Yeah. yeah, it was like brand new. Like when I started my business, I started it when Facebook was brand new, and they didn't even have pages or anything. Um, and anyone, like any time you posted, every single person would see that. So um, it was really nice because, like, Facebook was really helpful for me. You know, I would post something. It was as easy as, like, I would post something and I would get all these inquiries. Like, it was that easy. Um, and also, so I, I started building my email newsletter and um, emailing out to my brides, but it has changed so much. Like, you cannot just put out a status and instantly make money. It just doesn't work like that anymore. Right. Um, so I've definitely developed my marketing plan to be um, successful, and like today, <laughs> but in a totally different way. You have to be a lot more creative with it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, say you are a newer photographer, and maybe you're just starting out your business, and you want to add boudoir in, but you don't even know where to start. You don't know how to do the posing. You don't know how to do the lighting. You don't know if you should have a studio or if you rent out hotel rooms. I'm sure you've kind of done all of the different gamuts. Yeah. So is this someone who already has some clients or someone who has nothing at all? Nothing. Well, I would say some clients, but no boudoir experience. Okay. Um... Let's see here. Well, I did develop this tool called Model Call, um, and basically that's like my number one go-to tool um, in terms of in terms of getting clients. If like either I'm having a month that's um, slower than I anticipated, or um, just trying to get clients from like you know like you said, if you have a business with nothing. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, just like a quick overview, basically. You know, a lot of photographers, they'll post, like, a call for models, um, but then they'll just do the trade for, you know, a CD or whatever. Yeah. Um, trading? No, thank you. I don't do that. I would prefer <laughs> to be paid money, please. <laughs> you, you know so what I mean? Are like, you telling us you like to be profitable, Molly? Right? That's yeah. That's no, favorite word. Seriously, though, like, I, I was reading in all these forums all these people doing these, like, model calls. And in hindsight, I really wish I would have called my tool something different than Model Call because it's really confusing. Um, because mine is a lot different. Like, like I said, you don't trade. You're actually going to get paid for these shoots. Um, so essentially, um, basically, you put a you know a call for models. But then once um, once you get all these emails in, you kind of go through them and see like who would be. Um, you know, whose story really resonates with you and that you could use for like really good marketing pieces. Um, and then after their photo shoot, you're going to do a viewing and ordering session with them. It's no obligation for them to purchase anything. Um, but if they love their photos, they're going to want to purchase some. So you do end up getting paid. And then you also end up getting really great marketing materials. So for me, that's like my favorite way to do it. Um, and the, the model call, um, I do sell like an ebook. It's Model Call, and it has like templates in it, so you know exactly like who you should choose, what you should say to them, how to how to let them know that they're gonna potentially be purchasing something without feeling like you're tricking them, because you're not. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's like my number one tool. But um, I think just spreading the word in general, like when you're first starting, you know, if I mean, I'm sure everyone has a little bit of social media connections at this point in the game. So. Um, yeah, just getting the word out for the for starting, and then I would definitely recommend the model call. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's really cool. That's a that's a great uh, hint for people for where to start. And you know, I know I love templates, <laughs> especially with things that I'm not familiar with. Um, do you? So let's talk a little bit about you know when you find these people. Do you work? with makeup artists that you choose? Can you talk a little bit about the process and also like um, 
what kind of releases you have to have. You get all these beautiful marketing materials, and then you get a, a girl who says, oh, I don't want you to use them. Yeah, so um, you're asking for model call specifically, right? Yeah, just, okay. yeah. Yeah, so, um, so, yeah, I do have a hair and makeup artist, and yes, they are paid. A lot of people are like, well, if I do a model call, do I have to pay them? I'm like, yes, there's still a person that needs to get paid for a living. And they're like, well, what if that person doesn't end up ordering? And honestly, any shoot you have, even if they've paid a session fee, there's always a gamble that they're not going to buy pictures. I mean, there's no guarantee. Like, it's not like you're, it's not like they're signing a contract. Like, I'm going to buy things from you. You know what I mean? Like, right. you don't know. So what you really have to do is do a great job because clearly, you know, if you take the time to do the outfits and show up and do all that, like, commit hours to the shoot and they take your pictures and you do a good job, then they're going to want to buy them. Um, but yes, so part of the model call is in, and so the templates, they're not design templates, they're actually text templates, um, like email templates. Oh, okay. So in, in there I use specific wording so that they know that they have to sign a model release in order to get this like special. Okay. Um, and if they show up at the studio and they're like, oh, I've changed my mind, like I don't want to sign a model release, you know, I tell them, like I tell them again what it is, that way in case there's like a miscommunication, but if they're like dead set on it, I'm like, well, I'm really sorry, then I can't offer you this deal, because for me, if it, they don't end up buying anything, at least I'll have the marketing materials, but if right. someone doesn't sign the release, then I'm just SOL on all accounts, you know? Right. So. <laughs> yeah, that that would be the one thing that I would... I, I just heard a lot on message boards and probably more with photographers who don't have the same kind of experience you who have and the, and the knowledge yeah. oh I have these really beautiful photos and now all of a sudden I'm not allowed to show them or she said it was okay for me to put on Facebook and now she's freaking out you know I, and yeah I actually did a blog post on this um, I don't remember what the title is but basically it's like how to get your clients to let you use their images online Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like, oh, you trick them into it. It's like, you know, honestly, I think a lot of people, because, okay, so I get asked that same question a lot where they're like, no one ever lets me use their images. We really don't have that problem at my studio, and we don't do anything, like, really special, so I really thought about it, you know, how come everyone's letting us use their images and no other photographers get to? I think part of it is that I do... Um, I do shoot... Like, I wouldn't say I'm conservative, but I'm not, like... Like, I don't really do a lot of, like, really soup. I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to say raunchy, but, like, right. some people do, like, you know, really close-up butt shots. It's like, yeah. okay, I wouldn't really want that online either. Yeah. Um, I don't do pictures like that, really. Um, so I think that's part of the reason. But I also think it's because we really explain to them. We make them feel comfortable. You know, we want them to trust us. Like, you know, I had a girl actually email me. Um, she let us have her pictures online for like the past five years and she just emailed me she's like I'm really sorry uh, but I just got hired as a kindergarten teacher um, and I was wondering if you could take my images down and I'm like of course I can take your images down you know so right. I think our clients trust us like they know that if something for some reason they would need to take them down like of course I would let them do that I want right. to be more like a friend and less like a you know like a business I guess Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome. That's you know, it's it's like it's a whole new world for me trying to get inside these girls' brains. I, I can talk about brides all day, but um, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know how you feel. You've made that clear as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you can have the booties. I'll take the brides. But um, so talk to us a little bit about your big, huge project that just launched yesterday, right? Was oh, yesterday the yes, big launch I'm day? I'm so excited. So I always tell people, like, if I could give myself a nickname, and this probably sounds like my head's going to get too big to, like, fit through the door, but I want to be, like, the queen of marketing. Like, I love marketing. <laughs> I think my yeah. – I actually hired a studio manager this fall, and I think she's, like, super annoyed with me because every single day she comes into the studio to, like, ten emails. I'm like, oh, I have all these new marketing ideas. <laughs> She's like, well, how are we going to implement all these? I'm like, we have a plan, you know? So we definitely sit down and plan it all out. But um, so, yeah, so what my project is, is I started um, yesterday. It opened for enrollment. It's a four-week-long online boudoir marketing course. Um, and it's work at your own pace. It's all downloadable. You have lifetime access to it. Um, so in case you're not like me and you like to sleep, <laughs> you can definitely work at your own pace. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. It's going to um, take you all the way from um, setting what goals you truly want in your business 
all like and your marketing goals all the way down to actually leaving with like a full marketing plan that you can take baby steps to and really start to see um, a lot of new bookings and consistent bookings in your business. That is really That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, marketing is the hardest thing for most photographers, without it a is. doubt. And you're right that years ago it used to be as easy as putting something on Facebook or sending out a couple posts. You just you can't rely on that anymore at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Um, I actually had a girl email me. She's like, Molly, I'm really interested in taking this course, but I live in a really small town and everyone knows each other. Um, and I'm wondering, do I really need this course or can I just do word of mouth marketing? And she has like no clients right now. And she's just starting. And I'm like, listen. Honestly, you cannot just do word of mouth marketing. Like, if you maybe want, you know, one client a month, then maybe, you know, that'll do oh, fine. Right. But I live in a really small town, too. Um, and word of mouth, it's great. But the thing is, like, you need that momentum of clients before that starts working. Um, because people, like, word of mouth marketing works great if it's someone who's already had a shoot and you can see, like, their before and after picture or their tangible item, but if it's like your mom telling someone like, my daughter's the greatest photographer ever, it's not as like convincing. <laughs> um, and the thing too is like, it really just depends how many clients you want. Like for me, I want at least three to four clients every week. Um, and so, you know, word of mouth, it's great, but you need to have a plan that's going to consistently be bringing that in and something you can rely on more than just hoping other people bring you clients, um, I couldn't sleep at night if I was only doing word of mouth marketing. <laughs> well, and, and you know, where you are is not a big town. No. <laughs> it's only 65,000 people. 65,000 people. Like I, I called it on Google Plus, barely bigger than a cow town, and I wasn't kidding. No, it's I can't really believe, small. <laughs> I, three to four clients a week. I mean, there are people who are shooting portraits of kids, babies, seniors, whatever they can get in the door, who can't get three to four people a week. We really, marketing is a really big, it's our most important thing at our studio. And you might be thinking, well, I don't have all this time to do all this marketing that Molly does. But honestly, um, I've already done all the like trials. I love marketing. Um, and so I know exactly what works and what doesn't and what's not worth your time. Um, I actually created this Excel spreadsheet where you get to fill in like different, um, I have questions on there that you get to answer in order for you to figure out like, is this a good idea for me or not? Is Will this be a waste of my money or will this actually bring me clients? Um, because I had a woman email us the other day and she's like, hey Molly, I'm doing this event and I was wondering if you could do the event photography for it. You know, in trade we'll give you a free booth space. And I'm like, seriously? First of all, shooting three hours times what I make an hour, that's not gonna, I mean I could buy the booth three times over and Second of all, if I'm doing the shooting, how am I going to run the booth? I'm not going to end up booking any clients. So, you know, you have to, th yeah, I just think that that um, spreadsheet will be really helpful for people to not get, like, used in a sense. Have you guys ever had someone try to do that, get you to shoot an event for free? Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a bummer. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, you don't it's... need to be doing that to get marketing. So um, no. what I did actually is I emailed her back and I said, no, I don't actually, I can't do that. However, if you want, I can um, donate a couple door prizes and put our pamphlets in all of your girls' um, bags when they come in the door. And she was like, okay. So Sweet. I got all that marketing anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. You just have to tell people what you want. <laughs> it's It doesn't escape me that all the most successful photographers that we talk to talk about marketing first. It's and important. It's, it's hard as an artist, I think, to wrap your mind around the fact that the only way you're going to be successful, or as Charo and I like to, to, to use our little tagline, sane, happy, and profitable, is to understand the other side of, of the business, the non-shooting side. And if you are the kind of person who doesn't like that or doesn't want to do it, you need to hire somebody. I agree. I think you either need to hire someone or... Um... I mean, I think hiring someone's great, but the thing too, like when I look back on when I started, I hated numbers. I hated marketing. I hated everything except for shooting, and I've done like, I mean, I don't hate shooting now, but I've done like a complete circle. Um, 
And I think that what it was for me is like always investing in education and reading books and, you know, just thinking to myself, if I learn these numbers, I could make money, which in turn could let me go on a vacation to Greece, which is what mm -hmm. I love. So you just have to think about what you love and know that that's getting you to, you know, what you want, um, which is exactly what we're doing in this course, like setting these goals and then making baby steps. That's why, like, that way, even if you hate it, it's so easy and, like, I'm a total goofball, and the, all the videos are, like, super goofy and fun, so. <laughs> About how long, like, um, you said it's, it's four weeks self-guided. Mm -hmm. How much time would you say someone needs to dedicate to one lesson? Yeah, so I think we figured it out. I think it was, like, hmm, I want to say it was, like, one to two hours per week. It wasn't bad. Um... I think a lot of it, though, depends on, you have to answer a lot of questions in the workbooks. So it depends, like, do you know your goals? If you don't, it might take you a while to think on that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it really depends on that. But um, it is work at your own pace, and like I said, it's lifetime access. So um, it's definitely achievable, even if you're already super busy. Um, you could just carve out a little bit of time um, you know, or fill out the worksheets while you're eating breakfast, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've been taking some self-guided courses over the last couple months, and I found that for me, I had to actually physically put it on my calendar, like as if I was oh, yeah. going to class. Yeah. Like, I had to say, from 2 to 5 on Tuesdays, I'm going to be working on the blog that converts, which is what I'm working on right now. And if I don't do that, it's so easy to let things get away. So if you're the kind of person who likes schedules, even though it's self-guided, you kind of have to treat it like a yes. job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um, the, the welcome email when you sign up for the course, um, the first thing is uh, the schedule and me telling you, yelling at you nicely. <laughs> <laughs> to put it into your calendar because if you're not scheduling it, it's just never going to happen. No, so I no. totally agree with you. Yeah, weeks and weeks. I I bought a class. Oh, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And then fall portrait session hit. And then Christmas hit. And then New yeah. Year's hit. And finally, I was like, I paid you know a good amount of money. I know there's great content in here. And the second I did that and put it on my calendar and started working through it, I was like why didn't I do this earlier? So, you know, you kind of only have yourself to blame, but yet, you know, you, it is nice to have it self-guided so you can do it when it's convenient for you. The other thing, too, is um, part of the course is a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group, so it's only for the members. Um, but I'm constantly posting in there, like, how are you doing with week one? How are you doing with week two? Uh, what were your favorite videos? You know, and people will ask the other um, people in the group, you know, if they have, if they're having a struggle, like, what did you guys put down for your goals? Like, what did you put for this? So everyone's really encouraging, um, and I also do weekly live Q&A calls, so you get to write any questions you have throughout the whole course, and I answer them live weekly, and the calls are also recorded, so if you're not able to do it live, um, you can download it, so that's really encouraging, too, and helps you um, keep up with the course. Like, it's not like you sign up and you never hear from me again. Like, I'm on it. I'm like, hey... Did you get this done? Because I honestly, the whole reason I went into blogging is because I want to see people be profitable and successful. Like I've mentored photographers before. I love, um, I love mentoring face to face, but I wanted to be able to reach more people and help more photographers because, um, like I told you earlier, marketing, you know, it's changed and it doesn't need to be as hard as it can be. But um, if you don't have a good plan, that it is going to be hard because yeah, you can't just post a status anymore. Hey check out this one picture because there's a lot of photographers. Yeah, there are. Yeah. There, in fact, there's been 14 new ones since we started talking. <laughs> Probably. But you don't need to be scared of it. You know, you just need to make, you just need to have confidence and to have a plan in place in order to kick butt. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with us for a little bit. So, uh, anything else? Are we good, Charo? I think so. I think, yeah. You know what? I did have one last question for you. Yeah. Is there, do you find that there's a particular personality type that is best suited for doing boudoir work? Um, no. <laughs> really? Honestly, I, like, I know so many boudoir photographers and they're all really different. The one thing I will say is, um, if you are 
Well, I don't know. If you are a quiet or shy person, I actually feel like that actually works better with boudoir than, say, like weddings. Um, because when you're like, you work one on one with people. So you almost yeah. can be like a little bit quieter. And, um, but I really don't think, I mean, and men will always ask me too, like, can men shoot boudoir? Um, yes, I really think men can. And I know quite a few that are really successful at it. You just have to, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about that in my course. Like, you just have to approach marketing just a little bit differently. Um, okay. And I don't know, there's just like a lot of rules to, I mean, I'm not going to get into men shooting boudoir today, but. <laughs> or boudoir. Um, it's, it's a long, I know, do you say boudoir? Do boudoir, I kind of say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, so any personality type I feel like can definitely do it. You just have to try it out and see if it's what you love. And then if you love it, you can make it happen if you have the plan. So. Very cool. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we're going to have information about your booty camp because we know you're going you're gonna to do great with it. So we're going to have stuff all over our uh, Cameron a Dream on our page, uh, on our Facebook page. We also have a Facebook group. I know you pop in there every once in a while. Yay! Uh, <laughs> and, you know, as well as in our newsletters and stuff. So um, you're going to do awesome with this. I just know you are. Actually, I was just going to say, um, yesterday, like you said, was the first day that it opened, and we already have a lot of people enrolled, and it is a limited course. Um, okay. So definitely check it out, and if you're interested, like don't hesitate to sign up be, um, because there is a 45-day money-back guarantee. Um, because I, yeah, I'm just not worried at all about the money-back guarantee because I just know that you're gonna love it and it's gonna help you. Um, but yeah, it is limited enrollment because of the live Q&A. So just um, yeah, check it out, and if you like it, I'd love to see you in class. Awesome. Well, we'll have some information. I know you've got a really good page that. Uh, I shared a little bit earlier that kind of like it went through like a lot of questions. In fact, it's kind of where I stole a lot of the stuff I asked you here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so research. Way way more in, you know involved in what what we talked about here. So um, so anyone who's interested um, in looking into Molly's class, I think you definitely should. And thanks for hanging out. Finger dance. Thank you. Finger dance. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Molly. Bye. Bye. <laughs>